Hello Scorpio, welcome to your weekly tarot reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is for the week of March 19th through 25th. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. Now this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger and I ask you to um, you know, connect with each of these cards yourself, use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I provide. Okay. Remember that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. Look at that beautiful sun card, 19th mystery of the tarot. Let's put that into some context. We're going to use our Dove and Serpent spread. And as I do this, I do just want to say that if there's anything you need me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know in the comments, okay? So, our Dove and Serpent spread, we seem like we've got a lot of water energy, a lot of fire energy. It's all water, it's all fire, okay. Is there going to be some air? No, some earth. All right, so a lot of air, uh, not a lot of air, no air. Uh, we're going to do our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. And this is the card that we save until the very end. And we see if this can kind of, um, you know, magically bring everything together and, and give us the, the confirmation that we need. So please stick around to the end of the video. It is very important for the algorithm that you, um, you watch this all the way through, especially if it's resonating with you. Uh, if you like the readings, please... Um, you know, try to watch for as long as you can and check out your other placements as well, your sun, your moon, your rising sign placements. Uh, I would even do Venus and Mercury. So, we've got some major arcana, a lot of major arcana, a lot of fire, a lot of water, a lot of water. Uh, let's start with the sun card, of course. This was the first card that came out. This is the 19th mystery of the tarot. I think you're the type of person who really, um, you, like, you like to get involved. You like to kind of, um, you like to stay in the middle of things, you know. Um, I feel like you have a very confident energy. I feel like you're someone who likes to uh, stick up for people, you know. I think if you see somebody getting bullied, you see some kind of injustice, you see something that just ain't right, I don't think you're the person that stays on the sidelines. You know, I think you get right in the middle of it to help, to uh, be the voice of someone maybe who doesn't have one or to uh, stand up for someone who, you know, may not be standing up for themselves, may not be able to or whatever is the case. Um, I feel like you really have that strength about you. And, you know, even though you may not be the, you know, biggest, strongest, toughest person around, you've got this fiery energy. You've got this, um, you've got this power and this confidence about you. And now I'm not advocating violence by any means. I'm saying that you have this ability to get right in the middle of things and harmonize everything. You know, it's like you put yourself in the middle of a situation and things start coming together. People listen to you, you know, and it may not even be like a verbal, like a, a you know, verbal communication or language. I think it is more of your your energy, your aura, just you being there, your presence. You have a real like a real bright presence, you know. Um, sometimes people think Scorpio, they think you know a certain kind of darkness or something in Scorpios. I don't know. I've heard that. But you have a real radiance, you know, you have a real radiance, and I think it makes you a natural leader. I do. Um, I think it is. Maybe, uh, maybe can be overextended sometimes because I feel like you are the advocate, you are the helper and the leader. It may be difficult for you to accept help sometimes, you know, it may be difficult for you to let other people kind of take care of you. You know, if people are sick, you're the one that's taking care of them. But if you're sick, you'll take care of yourself, you know. It's almost a bit of a stubbornness, I think, that way. Um, so there is this, this independence, you know. 
there is this uh, kind of despite the circumstances, no matter what's going on, you don't want to yield. You don't want to uh, admit weakness. You don't want to admit failure. You don't want to seem like you can't um, do things for yourself or stand up for yourself, you know. And I wonder why that is so pronounced this week. You know, in the recent past, we have a five of wands here. There's been some struggle, some friction. Uh, I think pretty recently, probably. Um, and this could be a kind of some friction about this very thing, about you not admitting that you need help, about you not accepting care. Uh, you're, you're almost like your pride gets in the way and you're just kind of refusing to, to get the, the care that you need or to allow people to help you. Now, I... I'm really hoping that this is not any kind of a health-related thing. Uh, if you are sick or you have a medical emergency, please, please go to the professional medical services in your area, okay? Um, you know, I don't, I don't care how stubborn or proud you are. Please get the care that you need, right? But I, I don't know if that really is the case. Uh, with all of this water and with the hanged man in the immediate future, it feels to me like you're kind of refusing to go to the doctor or something, you know? I hope that's not the case. Honestly, I do. I feel like you're in an argument with somebody about something like this, that you are, you're refusing to kind of admit that you need help or admit that you need uh, love even maybe. You know, we see a lot of this water energy here. There's something with this water. Something with the water. And you're almost refusing. You know, you're, you're, you're in the desert, you know, and you're thirsty, but you're refusing that glass of water. Right? And I don't know why just, just yet. Uh, I don't know if there was uh, something in the past, perhaps, where you... Uh, you opened yourself up, you accepted your vulnerability, and you allowed someone in who you thought was helping you, and maybe you were, you were taken advantage of, maybe you were hurt thereby. There is something, I think, in the more distant past that has contributed to this, um, this kind of stubbornness, you know what I mean? I almost expect to see some Taurus energy here. Um, and honestly, we do see a little bit of Taurus energy in the uh, the final card on the path of the serpent. Um, but back to this five, who whoever's in your life now, I think there's they're trying to kind of convince you. They're you're kind of in this argument with them, or they they're trying to tell you, hey, look, you can't be the um, the the leader, the advocate, the the kind of the central focus of. Uh, or the central source of power and energy for everyone else. Sometimes you need help too. And you have to let other people help you. You have to accept this kind of help or this nourishment, right? You have to accept the water when you're dying of thirst. You know, there's no pride or stubbornness that should get in the way of, of that. You know, I mean, that's like survival. That's basic survival, right? But there is uh, some kind of contention there. And there is this stubbornness that I'm feeling and this, this pride slash stubbornness. We do see some Leo energy in, in the reading too. Um, I wonder if your person is maybe a, um, maybe a Sagittarius. I feel like they, uh, they're trying to argue with you and convince you that you need to accept nourishment accept help, accept the love, right? In whatever form this is kind of manifesting. But they're also the kind of person, now this could be a family member, could be your romantic partner, could be your best friend, could be coworkers, whoever. I feel like there's a Sagittarius person in your life that is trying to uh, urge you to accept the love, uh, but they're not going to force you to do it, you know? They're going to say, well, if it's your will, if you really insist, these are all the reasons why I disagree with you, and I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna support that or enable that or or whatever. I'm not going to agree with you, but ultimately their philosophy is kind of live and let live. So you know, if if these are your choices, no one's gonna force you to do anything, you know. 
I think that's your person. I think that's your Sagittarius person. Now, in the present, there is this 10. So it feels like people are trying to take care of you. Maybe that people are trying to bring you some soup, you know, when you're sick. And it's just overwhelming. It's just too much. And you're almost just like, leave me alone. You know, it almost, it feels like it's too much. It feels like, like every, every moment somebody's checking in with you or asking how you're doing, bringing you something, giving you medicine or soup or water or just, it, they won't leave you alone, right? It's just too much. Uh, and that's a 10 of cups feeling. That's the 10 of cups feeling. And this is um, because people love you and care about you, you know. So this is kind of accepting the love. Um, it's almost like being the kind of leader, being this solar energy that we're talking about and being strong enough to accept these people coming in and checking on you every five minutes, you know, or giving you all of this love more than you really need, more than you really want, more than you can even consume. You know, this is like you're absolutely stuffed full of food and they just keep bringing you more dishes and it's just getting too much. You know, you don't even want to look at it. But because you are this solar energy, it's like you're you're going to endure that rather than complain. You know, you're going to just accept all of this food that comes in. You may even eat most of it rather than kind of rather than complaining and putting yourself as, um, you know, someone who has the problem because you're the you're the fixer. You're the problem solver. Right. You're not the problem. Haver. Whatever. So there are a lot of people that care about you and are concerned about you and are, yes, probably checking in every five minutes with you bringing you something every every couple of minutes. You, you want some water, you want some soup. Can I make you a sandwich? Do you want to go outside? I mean, just all sorts of things. You know, and I don't know what's going on. I don't know. If, I, I hope it's not a, a health-related thing. I really do. Um, but I feel like your people or your person, your Sagittarius person, perhaps, is trying to give you this abundance of love and affection and care and nurturing and you're almost like begrudgingly accepting it, you know. I think you, your, your stubbornness and your pride is trying to reject it. I feel like you're kind of going to just grumble and, and allow it. Um, up above everything, we do see this Nine of Cups, which is a very, very wonderful card. I think truly, honestly, deep down, you, you do appreciate this. You know, you're, it makes you happy that people care about you or this particular person. If this, if your person is a Sagittarius, if it's represented by this person, maybe an S name, you're very thankful for them. You feel loved. You know that you're loved. You know that people want to care for you and that they care about you. You know, they want to kind of nurture you and, and they want to give you all the love that they can. Maybe they just don't know when, when is too much, you know. Uh, but you are someone who is, I think you're physically strong and, and powerful. I think you have, um, you have a focus on, on health and well-being, but it's, it's one where it's, um, it's almost like you just do it yourself, right? It's not something that you really share with others. It's kind of a solitary thing. I feel, you know, weirdly that you are a solitary person, even though you're in the middle of, I think, you're always in the middle of everything, you know? You're the advocate. You're the one that's kind of fighting for the underdog. You're the one that is taking care of others. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you worked in the service industry, maybe even like hospitality or food service or something, because I feel like you're always trying to make other people ha happy, provide what other people need, but don't you dare try to provide what I need. You know what I mean? You're the giver. You're the fixer. You're the problem solver. Um, and so this isn't a solar energy that is just out there saying, hey, look at me. I want all the attention. That's no, not that. It's you radiating 
your light. You know, there's so much light and heat and warmth and love coming off of this star that we don't ever really see the star. We don't see what's behind all of this heat and light and radiance. No one knows what it really looks like or what it, what, what's, what's inside of it. I mean, I think scientists do. Um, it's a metaphor. Uh, so, and that's how you like it. You're, you're radiating so much and you don't want people to get too close to you. You don't, people aren't going to be able to see. You're too blindingly bright, right? For people to see really inside of you. And maybe because inside of you is a little bit of this watery softness, this, you know, uh, ooey gooey center. And this, I think, is the, the love that you have, the reason why you are such a bright shining sun. Bright shining star is because you're filled with such abundant love and concern and compassion. You know, I think you really do love people and you're filled with this, this energy. And it's kind of um, not even, not even your choice, really. It just, it radiates from you. But this is something that's kind of secret, right? This is a three of cups. This is still kind of beyond the veil, right? It's above the abyss. There's a gulf between this core part of you and the rest of the manifested world, right? The rest of the, the energies that we can, we can process and experience as, as you know, intelligent beings. So you like to keep this, it's kind of a moat. You like to keep this moat around you, right? But there are just, just droves and droves of people that are coming to your castle, trying to cross the moat and bring you gifts and food and what cows, whatever. You know, they're just, they're trying to bring you gifts and they're trying to heal you and bring you different medicines or, or salves or, you know, um, they're trying to care for you. They're trying to show their concern and their appreciation and their love for you. But you've got that moat. And maybe the moat's filled with, you know, hippos and crocodiles. And it's, um, you know, you're trying to deter people from getting too, too close. Because you're the giver. You're the provider. You're the one that's radiating out. In the immediate future, we see the hanged man. So I wonder if this is you kind of um, in the future saying, fine. You know, uh, I yield, I accept, and you, you, you lower the drawbridge, right? You let all the alligators go and the hippos and people can come in fine. You can get close, you know, I'll accept what you're offering. I'll accept all of this water, all of this love that is, is pouring in because honestly, it's what you really want anyway, you know? So I think that might be changing your perspective on things a little bit. The hanged man sometimes can, can flip around and go into different, different positions, different angles to see what's really going on in a situation and in life in general. So by, by yielding to all of this love that's coming your way, you're going to start to see things a little differently. You know, it might, it might transform your attitude a little bit, a little bit differently, you know. So it is kind of a, a surrendering, kind of an acceptance. It's almost like uh, you're going to just kind of suffer through this, all of this love that's coming in. You're just going to say, fine, I'll suffer it. I'll endure it. You know, secretly you like it, but, um, you know, you're kind of going to grumble through it. You know what I mean? Path of the Serpent, Five of Cups. It's going to stir up new things in you. This, you're going to maybe go through some different emotions, like uh, you're going to be mad at people for, for just bothering you so much, or you're going to feel embarrassed, or you're going to feel maybe weak because, um, you know, you actually need this love from other people. For whatever reason, whatever's going on right now, I feel like everybody does have their attention on you, and so that's going to maybe bring a little bit of self-consciousness, you know? You're going to want to uh, maybe, you know, widen the moat, bring in some more crocodiles, you know, that's, that's what you're going to feel like doing. I don't think you will. I think the hanged man here is the strong energy, the yielding, accepting, surrendering kind of energy. But you're going to want to. You're going to feel like widening the moat and bringing in more crocodiles and hippos. Maybe some uh, sea snakes or something. 
But that, I think that feeling is going to maybe not pass, but it's going to change, right? The Five of Cups is all about shifting emotions, going through the different ways that we're feeling about any situation, you know? And the card in your, the position of your uh, relationships, we have this Art or Temperance card. I think this is your person. I really do. I think they might be a Sagittarius. Maybe not. They may have an S name as their initial. Maybe not. But they are kind of someone that is uh, kind of the, the, the reconciler. They kind of keep the balance, you know. They, um, they are kind of, they're kind of a mirror for you in a way, you know. They're able to reflect kind of toward you um, your own energy in a way that you maybe are, are usually not, able to perceive yourself, you know? So there's someone who is really, really honest with you. Uh, they love you intensely. There's nothing they wouldn't do for you. And part of that is to kind of show you when you're maybe overreacting or you're, you know, you're reacting to something in a way that, you know, maybe if you saw it objectively, you would kind of, you would temper it, right? So they're kind of that, um, that balance that you may need at any given moment if you're feeling too fiery, they're a little bit of water. If you're too watery, they're a little bit of fire, you know? If you're too much air, they bring you down to earth. So it's just, they just balance you like that a little bit, you know? And again, this could be a friend, coworker, family member, could be your lover, your spouse, you know? I think they're a Sagittarius, but if they're not a Sagittarius, they definitely have this very philosophical outlook on life. Remember I said it's kind of like a live and let live, but they're going to make sure that um, that you know. You know what I mean? Like they're going to let you do your thing, but they're going to make damn sure that you're aware that they don't approve, that they, um, you know, they're going to show you that objective picture, right? So I think that I think this you're really lucky to have this person in your corner. I really feel like it. Um, now, Here's some of that Leo pride energy in your fears, worries, and concerns. I think part of the, the reluctance to accept this water, accept this love, is that it's going to make you look weak. It's going to make you look like you're not in control. It may even feel like you're going to lose control, literally, because you're going to be so overwhelmed with this water, with this love, that you're going to be swept away by it. And you don't want to be swept away. You like being in control. You like being the giver, the fixer, the problem solver. So... If you yield, if this hanged man is activated and you yield, are you losing control? Are you now putting, uh, putting your fate into someone else's hands? Or are you just, is your power diminishing? Is your influence, is your stature kind of shrinking a little bit? You know, that's the fear and the worry. In the kind of projected outcome, we see this is that stubborn Taurus energy I was talking about. This is a six of pentacles. This, I think, is a real harmony in your life. I think the way this is all flowing is in a real balance kind of state, you know. Um, I think if this is a health thing, health or wellness, which again, I hope it's not, but if it is, the six is saying everything's going to be restored. Everything's going to be back in harmony, right? All your chi is going to flow. Everything's going to be balanced. All of your elements, all of your humors are going to be in proper balance. All of your planets are going to be in alignment. Okay. And I think that's, I think that's a good thing. And part of this is because of your stubbornness. Because you, you will yield, I feel, but you're not going to be swept away. You're not going to lose your power. This card is your, your vitality, your power. It's almost as if you're worried that if you are swept away by all of this water energy, right, that it's going to actually do more harm than good because you're going to lose your fire. You're going to lose your vitality, right? And this card is saying, no, no, you're not. You have the, the power, the vitality. You have the stubbornness and the pride to not let it get that far. You know, you can still yield, you can have the balance, right? You can still yield, but you can still be this solar energy. You can still have your vitality, you know, your power. So what we have with the sun 
is the sun's right in the center of this six, right? This is the hexagram. The hexagram in, in astrology is the, the seven planets, right? Well, the six that are at the points and then the sun right in the middle. And you are that sun right in the middle. And you're going to continue to be that sun right in the middle. But in a, a more, uh, like a higher arc, kind of, you know? A, a, you're going to kind of go up an octave. And this harmony and this resonance is going to be there on a, on a new level for you. All of your planets will be in alignment. All of your affairs will be in perfect balance and in perfect order. Uh, the people around you are still going to um, are still going to be kind of orbiting you, right? Because you do. You like to be the center, right? You like to be the one that's kind of keeping everything going, keeping the structure, keeping the system intact, keeping everybody on track, um, supporting everyone, uh, providing light and heat and and energy to everybody you know and you're still going to be that so this is saying that look you know at the at the end of the day things aren't really going to change you know through all of this energy things are going to be how they were but they're just going to be up a level they're going to be better okay i think this is a really good reading i think this is really important for you now the thing that we didn't have was any air energy so I'm wondering if this is going to be some air. And the air would kind of show us um, the more interpersonal kind of communication going on and the way that you might be expressing yourself, you know. Um, so I, I definitely think this is air. But what kind of air? Is this going to be major arcana? Is this going to be, um, you know, maybe the lover's card? The lover's card would give us the... Um, the air component, because it's, it rules the sign of Gemini, which is an air sign. Uh, it could be giving us also that, um, that kind of commitment, that love, that union, that kind of, you know, being married to this, um, all of this energy, right? Really accepting it in and, and, and uniting, becoming one with it, you know, through that kind of, you know, energetic marriage. Um, so my only guess really is that lover's card. You know, any, any of the other swords cards I don't think would really be all that meaningful here. But let's see what we have. Yeah, there's that lover's card. So this really is something that I think um, you're going to commit to, to this, um, to receiving as much love as you're giving out. Uh, it's like you are admitting that you need all of this love. You're admitting that you really do want it, you need it. It's something that is going to sustain you. It's something that uh, is going to bring you closer to maybe to this person. If this is your, your Sagittarius person, it's going to be a, a, a way for you to really forge a stronger and closer bond with, with everyone in your life, with everything that you're doing and with yourself too. Because you're, you're creating that, that moat around you, right? With the crocodiles and the hippos and the snakes and stuff. But it's almost like that is distancing you from yourself too. It's almost like part of you is on the other side of that moat. And so you're not even letting yourself really get, get in all the way, you know? So we've got the lover's card here, and I think this is really showing a commitment to all of this energy, a real uh, union of all of these forces, right? You're really kind of marrying yourself to this idea that you can be this radiant sun, and you can also be a receiver of love. You know, it's that balance. It's that inner pressure and the, the outer forces that need to be in balance for this star to continue, right? There needs to be equilibrium. And I think that's perfectly represented by this lover's card. I think this is, this is a wonderful reading for you. Uh, Scorpio, thank you for letting me read for you today. We're going to do an extended. If you want to stick around, click on the link right here. You can have access to all of the extended readings. Uh, this was your weekly reading March 19th through 25th on Dove and Serpent Tarot.